Hi everybody, today we're going to be looking at probability tree diagrams. So basically these tree diagrams are visual representations of the possible outcomes of an event. Um, and what it does is it makes it easier to calculate probability. We have what we call branches, the branches of a tree. So I have an outcome. So the outcome of each branch is uh, written at the end and the probability of each is written on the branch. So this might be say 0 0.4 and this would be 0 0.6. So a speciality of these branches that you need to know is that the sum of the probability of these two branches is always equal to 1. Okay, so if I, let's say I extend my tree and I have two more events coming out from here, and two more events coming up from here, then no matter what probabilities I write, this could be 0.5 and 0.5, this could be 0.7 and 0.3. So no matter what the probabilities are, the sum of the two is always, um, always has to be equal to one. And the only sort of rule that you need to know for probability trees is that when you go along the branches, Say I have some outcome, outcome x here and outcome y, and um, say I have a tree that looks like this. The only sort of rule that you need to remember is that when I go along the branches, so when I have to find out uh, the probability of outcome one and outcome x happening, then when I go along the branches, like so, I would have to multiply multiply and when i'm going vertically downwards then i need to add up the probability okay and so to fully understand what i'm talking about let's look at an example so tree diagrams can be used for both independent and dependent events so first let's look at the most basic the classical example for an independent event and that is a coin toss Okay, so a coin toss has two possibilities. We can either get heads, heads, or we can get tails. And each coin toss is independent. The outcome of one does not impact the outcome of the other. This is what independent events mean. All right, so these are our two possibilities. So how can we draw a possibility tree diagram for this? We would start on our first rule first toss and the first toss can have either heads you can either roll a heads uh sorry you can either flip and get a heads or get tails right so these are the two outcomes or the two possible events and the probability of getting heads is half and tails is a half you can uh, write your probabilities in fraction form or with decimals it doesn't matter and then say I flip my coin a second time. So what are the possible outcomes of two coin flips? I can get, let's just work it out on the side here. I can get heads and heads, or I could get heads and tails, or I could get tails on my first flip and heads on my second, or I could get tails on both flips, right? So these are my four possible outcomes from two coin flips. So here we have our first coin flip, first flip, and the two possible outcomes are heads and tails. And our second flip, we have two more possible outcomes. So after uh, flipping head the first time, I could once again flip either heads or tails, right? And again, the probability of each is a half. And after getting tails on my first try, I can still get either heads or tails on my second flip. Okay, and again, the probability is a half and two branches together. The probability does add up to one. So this here would be for my second flip. Alright, so this is the tree diagram for two uh, coin flips. Now. Let's say my question is asking me to find the probability of 
uh, flipping a coin twice and obtaining exactly one tails. Okay, exactly one tails. So this could mean that either I flip heads first and then tails. This still gives me one tails. Or I could flip the tails my first try and then get heads uh, my second try. So these two events or outcomes satisfy or answer my question, which is that I want to find the probability of getting exactly one tails after two coin flips. So I need to find the probability of these two events. Now, how do I do that using my tree diagram? So we identify which events we want. We want the event of getting exactly one tails, which is first getting a heads and then a tails, this one or first getting tails and then getting heads, which is this one. Okay, so to calculate the probability of each, um, let me just quickly go back here. The rule we said is that if we're going across branches, we have to multiply. So the same thing here, when I go across branches to first, uh, for in heads in my first flip and tails in my second, across, I have to multiply. So the probability of getting heads and then tails is going to be a half, times a half. So the probability of this event is a half times a half, right, which is a quarter. And the same thing for this event. First getting tails and then getting heads is half times a half. This is half times a half, which is a quarter. Okay, and now this is where we use our second rule. And quickly going back, the second rule was that, um, oh, I haven't written it down, but we said that when we're going or traversing vertically, then we add up the probabilities. When we want to find the total probability of these two events together, we add the two together. All right, so our total probability is going to be one fourth plus one fourth, which is a half. Okay, so this is the answer to the question, and we can see that it makes sense because just looking at what we've written here, two events out of the four possible outcomes satisfy um, our condition, getting exactly one tails. So two out of the four is a half, and that's exactly what we've gotten from the tree diagram. And you may think that, you know, what what was the necessity of drawing this and then getting a half when I could have directly just uh, written down all the events or outcomes of my sample space and easily obtained it like this. And um, you're right, for this example, it would just have been easier to uh, list down all the outcomes and then uh, find the probability from that. But what if the question is, you know, after five, six flips, um, then it becomes hard to keep track of all the of all the probabilities or maybe not for coin flips for um, dependent events for example tree diagrams are more suited or make it easier to solve the question so it really depends on what kind of question you're looking at okay so i hope this was helpful and thank you for watching